Hello, thank you for joining today's webinar on how to simply run complex AI training and inference workloads with Domino and NVIDIA. Pleasure to, to be here with you. Today we'll be talking about how to run complex AI training and inference workload, taking advantage of Domino software and some of the pre-built containers with deep learning framework and other machine learning utilities that we make available for free on MGC. So NVIDIA GPU Cloud. Today, I will be joined by Nikolai Manchev, who is a principal data scientist at Domino Data Labs. Nikolai, do you want to say hello? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm, I'm Nikolai. I'm part of the European team of Domino Data Lab. I specialize in data science and machine learning, and I'll uh, do part of the demo for you today. So with that, let's jump into the demo real quick. Okay, so, so let's start with a quick introduction to the Domino Data Science platform. So the Domino Data Science platform is an end-to-end -end platform for code-first data scientists. It provides infrastructure orchestration, reproducibility, model operationalization, uh, governance and management. The platform is completely open, so we don't impose um, any specific tools or languages on the data scientists. As you can see here, uh, we, we support virtually any program language. We can run Python, uh, R, MATLAB, Julia, uh, but we're not restricted to uh, open source languages only. You see, we, we support MATLAB, SAS, anything that can be containerized, we can run in Domino. Uh, we can pull data from anywhere, uh, relational databases, flat files, do uh, as long as there is a JDBC driver or there is a Python or an R library that supports uh, connecting to this data source, we can ingest data and process data in Domino. You see here on top that we support a number of tools. Again, we don't impose any tools. We can run Jupyter, uh, Zeppelin, Visual Studio Code. But again, we're not limited to open source tools only. Uh, we can run things like uh, MATLAB, we can run SAS Studio, and so on. Domino is a fully open platform. All the functionality is exposed by APIs. So uh, we integrate and play nicely with all the other tools that are already present in the ML ecosystem. Uh, we can integrate with GitHub, uh, with Jira, we support exports for, for example, SageMaker, we integrate with BI tools and so on. And we also provide distributed compute capabilities on demand Spark clusters, for example. And then we also support any algorithmic package so that scientists have the freedom to install uh, things like PyTorch, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, uh, whatever they want without having to go through difficult internal processes or, or involve IT. As long as they have permissions, uh, they can configure their own environments. Finally, Domino can run on any infrastructure. We can run on any cloud. We can run on AWS, uh, GCP, Microsoft Azure. We can run on-prem, on bare metal. And of course, most importantly, we can run on NVIDIA hardware directly. Okay, so, so that's the high-level intro. We can now move to the demo. So this is the project's view of Domino. Uh, the work we do in Domino is based on projects. They are like logical containers uh, that keep your assets, like Python script, R script, shell files, interactive applications, trained models, and so on and so on. And as part of the sharing and collaboration capabilities in Domino, uh, Domino automatically uh, indexes these projects and makes them searchable. Of course, the search respects uh, the permissions as well. So for example, if I want to look for something that has been done in my organization and built on top of this existing knowledge instead of reinventing the wheel every time, uh, what I can do is I can just go and search and see what assets are available to me in my organization for this specific thing that I'm looking to, uh, to work on. So for example, uh, maybe I want to find something about scikit-learn. I don't know much about scikit. I can just search for scikit and I will see all projects, files, machine learning models, compute environments, executions, and so on that mention scikit. And so, for example, there are existing projects here that contain uh, templates that help me learn Scikit. And, and I can go into this project, fork the project into my own namespace and, and start playing with Scikit. Uh, we also support project tagging. So, for example, if I want to search for something very specific, for example, if I want to search for XGBoost, but then I also add the project tag NVIDIA, uh, Domino will search through all projects that have been tagged with NVIDIA and that mention XGBoost. 
XGBoost. Uh, so I can narrow down my search and I see that there is a project here about XGBoost. And if I click on it, the first thing I see is a readme page that tells me that this project is actually built on top of the Rapid Suite uh, from NVIDIA and trains an XGBoost model. I will pause now and I will uh, hand over to Adam to tell you a little bit more about Rapids. Yes, sure. Rapids, as the definition listed here suggests, is a set of open source libraries which give you the freedom to execute your end-to-end -end data science and analytic pipelines entirely on the GPU. When designing Rapids, we didn't want to create yet another data science toolkit with yet another learning curve. Therefore, what we have done is we have embraced the APIs of the most established tools that are used broadly by data scientists, so tools such as Pandas, Scikit-Learn, NetworkX, and more. And we've created drop-in replacement of those. Namely, we've created QDF, which is intended to be a drop-in replacement of Pandas, NumPy. QML, which is intended to be a drop-in replacement of Scikit-Learn XGBoost. Or QGraph, which is intended to be a drop-in replacement of NetworkX and more such as QSpatial and, and several others. On top of that, we have implemented distribution of the execution process using Dask, which allows you to scale your data preparation, ETL or machine learning workloads, not only within the limits, constraints of, me of a memory of a single GPU, but across multiple GPUs in a single system, or when running larger jobs across multiple GPUs across your data center. As a consequence, rapid users with minimal changes to their codes, typically limited to the changes to the import statements, can enjoy a fairly substantial acceleration of their workloads. And this will affect every single aspect of their pipeline, starting with uh, the typical data loading and reprocessing pipelines. Here you can see an atypical acceleration that you should expect when executing, say, merge, sorting, or group by operations. What you're seeing here is acceleration over a CPU as measured in multiples. So a typical merge operation will be anywhere between 500 to 970 times faster than a state-of-the-art data center CPU. A typical sort operation will be anywhere between 240 to 360 times faster than a state-of-the-art CPU. Similarly, group by statements will also be more than two orders of magnitude faster than their implementation on a CPU. And we acknowledge that Rapids is a relatively young uh, library. As a consequence, we continue to improve it with time continue to provide further and further acceleration. What you're seeing here is the acceleration that we've managed to uh, add in between the release 0.10 and 0.13 of QDF alone. Integration of Rapids is straightforward. The API is deliberately consistent. More importantly, even if there are some limits to Rapids capability, you can quite easily migrate your Pandas data frame into Rapids, but also a, a Rapids data frame back to Pandas. So if you don't have certain functionality with Rapids or you prefer to execute it on the CPU side, leaving GPU resources for some other more important task, this is a straightforward and can be achieved with just a single line. All of the other uh, Rapids APIs are, again, deliberately consistent with what you would expect from tools such as Pandas. So calculating mean, standard deviations, finding unique values, is all carried out in exactly the same way. This also includes querying, grouping, and joining operations, and many, many more. Beyond QDF, that provides you Pandas-like capability, Rapids also is distributed with QML, which is intended to be a drop-in replacement to Scikit-Learn and XGBoost. This is a current list of algorithms that are implemented within Rapids, plus XGBoost, which has already single GPU, multi-GPU, and multi-node implementation. And as you can see, there is a, a wide range of different algorithms which are already present in Rapids, and we continue to grow that list. Within this year, we're focusing of extending, not necessarily the direct list of algorithms, but extending multi-GPU and, and their multi-node implementation. And again, integrating QML is as straightforward as integrating QDF. In this case, 
we're seeing code executing principal component analysis migrated from its CPU based implementation on the left to the GPU based implementation on the right. As you can see, we had to change the import statement, obviously, to use QML instead of scikit-learn. And we had to migrate the data frame, which was originally loaded by Pandas, to a QDF data frame so that it can be processed on the GPU side. What we are seeing here is a speed up that you should expect when migrating from a state of the art two 20 core CPUs into a single V100 GPU. As you can see, depending on the algorithm and the amount of data you have, the acceleration will vary anywhere from 5x through 10, 20, 40, 50x up to 700x and more for the most computationally demanding algorithms. Rapids is also distributed with a wide range of other utilities. This includes libraries such as Forest Inference Library, which allows you to deploy uh, trained models into production systems. And again, take advantage of GPU acceleration and benefit from at least an order of magnitude of acceleration. We also distribute libraries to accelerate other parts of the data science stack, including QGraph, which is intended to be a drop-in replacement of NetworkX. This is a list of currently supported algorithms, major all of them currently with single GPU implementation. Uh, we are working towards multi-GPU and multi-node implementation of those algorithms as well. Typically, you will observe even more substantial acceleration for graph-based algorithms, ranging between 2000 to even 11,000x for certain algorithms. In order to take advantage of Rapids, you need to obviously deploy it. And there are quite a few different routes for deploying Rapids in your system. On the rapids.ai website, you will find this little configurator tool through which you can choose the method that you want to use for deployment. And the, the release, your Linux distribution, some other dependencies, and that tool will generate the appropriate installation command for you. In this case, we're installing using Conda on Linux Ubuntu 16.04, but with just a single click, we can generate a Docker-based installation, and this is what we are going to use in this demo. In particular, we will use NGC-based Docker container, and I'll talk about NGC slightly later. Thank you, Adam. So um, if you see here, our project is associated with a specific computing environment, which is essentially a Docker image definition. And if I go and open this Docker image definition, you will see uh, that this image is based on the NVIDIA uh, Rapids AI image. So I can just get this image from NVIDIA, which is being optimized. It contains all the libraries that I need. I can use QDF, QML. Uh, I don't need to install anything uh, additionally. But if I want to add the layers of libraries on top, of course, I can add additional layers to the Docker file. Let me go back to the project, uh, and I want to show you here in the file section of the project. This is where we keep uh, the project assets. So we have things like, you see, shell scripts, Python files, uh, markdown documents, and so on and so on. And Domino automatically versions everything that is put in the project file system. So for example, if I open one of my Python files, uh, you will see that Domino automatically tracks the changes that happen in the file. And this, this is for the purposes of reproducibility, especially in regulated industries. Uh, you need to be able to reproduce your workloads if you get audited or if you, if you need to, uh, to be compliant to specific regulations. So Domino automatically tracks all changes to the project, no matter what tool is being used on top, RStudio, uh, Jupyter, SAS, and so on and so on. So if you need to reproduce a workload from, let's say, 12 months ago, Domino knows what your project looked like 12 months ago and can, with single click, rerun this workload under the original conditions. So what I will do now is I will launch a workspace uh, in this project, which is uh, an IDE. And in this project, I will use Jupyter Lab. So my project here, you see, is associated with um, with the Rapids AI, uh, with the Rapids image uh, from NVIDIA, and we're also using a GPU accelerated hardware, which makes my uh, ID capable of using backend GPU compute and, and makes everything lightning fast. So if I now open 
a Jupyter Lab session, uh, you will see that Domino starts a Jupyter Lab instance. And here on the left hand side, I have access to all files that are part of my project file system. This has been done for me automatically. And also all the libraries that come from, uh, from the Rapids image are readily available in my session. So what I have here is uh, actually a simple uh, Python script that trains an XGBoost model. And we can control if the training is using the GPUs or is relying on CPUs only. And I can run this uh, here directly in JupyterLab as a developer. But if I want to operationalize this properly, Domino has a dedicated section for running jobs. So if I go to the job section of this project, you will see here that I have tried running this script and this is without acceleration, uh, without using the GPUs. And it kind of takes about an hour uh, for the job to complete. So what we will do now is we will rerun the script, uh, but we will pass a command line argument telling the script to uh, use the backend GPUs. So uh, use GPU and then we will launch it. And this training is operating on a data set, which is substantial, it's 5.7 gigabytes. So that's why it takes, uh, it takes about an hour to, uh, for the training to complete if we use CPUs only, but you'll see what will happen once the uh, accelerated uh, GPU training kicks in. Now you see here that I have executed this script a couple of times in the past, so 14 days ago and also four days ago here, and Domino automatically keeps track of these executions. So if I click on this one, you will see the Domino captures metadata like name of the script, the hardware that was used, and also the specific version of the Docker image which was used as well. So this is for reproducibility purposes. For example, if you are to reproduce a workload from 12 months ago and then in between then and now, someone updated, let's say, the scikit-learn version or the QDF version or something like this, Domino automatically keeps track of those changes and it will know what the environment looked like 12 months ago and it will use the specific version of the library which was used back then. Okay, um, and that's why you see it's not just the versions of the library and the code uh, that the reproducibility engine provides automatically, it also has access to a snapshot of the project file system as of the moment of the execution. So you see here that uh, this is telling us that that's what our files looked like as of the time of execution, which was 12th of November. So if I need to reproduce a specific workload, so let's say this one from 14 days ago, I can just select it and I can say, hey, Domino, rerun this with the original version. And what happens is Domino will spin up an instance on the original hardware tier. It will present the compute environment, which was used 14 uh, days ago. It will start the script with the command line arguments of, as of 14 days ago, and it will present uh, the project file system snapshot as, as of 14 days ago. So the only thing as data scientists that we need to ensure in this case is proper randomization control. So we need to set our seeds correctly and then uh, we will get completely identical results. Uh, so you see here that my uh, training is now running and it will uh, probably take a few minutes to complete, definitely not an hour because this time I'm using accelerated uh, GPU execution. But in the meantime, what I will do is I want to show you while we're waiting for this thing, how we can use different tools in Domino. So again, I said that we don't impose any tools on you. Uh, so I will go to uh, one of my other projects this one that uses um, accelerated GPU compute um, with R code. And when I go to workspaces, you see that I can start uh, different IDEs. I can start something like uh, MATLAB, SAS, RStudio, uh, Apache Superset, Jupyter, Visual Studio Code, and so on and so on. Um, what I will do is I will open an RStudio session here. You will see again that Domino uh, connects me to an RStudio instance. And again, I have access to the project file system. I have written here a very simple uh, script that uses Keras with, um, with backend compute to train a super simple uh, machine learning model. Uh, this one is a toy example. We have the 5.7 gigabytes data set uh, running in the other tab. So let me just first show you uh, that we can uh, very quickly inspect the available GPUs. So let's uh, let's load Keras uh, first, and then we we'll initialize uh, backend. 
Okay, let's create a session. Okay, and now let's list the available devices. And you see here that um, I can see uh, both the CPUs and also uh, the GPUs. And then what I can do is I can uh, run my simple script that trains um, a neural network using any data set. So let's kick this off. Okay, you see the, uh, the model, we have something like 200 parameters. Uh, and you see that the network starts learning uh, and the training and the validation loss are going down and the accuracy is increasing. Uh, so this, this is more or less how we can run different IDEs in Domino. And the value proposition here is that we know the different data science teams have different skills. Uh, so you don't enforce one ID on all the data scientists. If one member of the team uses R, the other one uses Python, or the third one uses MATLAB, they can all collaborate on the same project and run their favorite IDEs and still work together and deliver value. Now, I will go back to uh, our job execution, and you see that the job has successfully completed. So now with the GPU accelerated backend, uh, it took us uh, less than four minutes to go through this 5.7 gigabyte uh, training data set. Uh, let's talk about uh, using accelerated deep learning. And we have another project here uh, that uses PyTorch. So I will open this project. And um, this project again uh, uses an image that comes from NVIDIA and NGC uh, image. Uh, Adam, would you, would you mind telling us uh, a bit more about, about this specific image? Sure. If you go to ngc.nvidia.com, what you'll find after clicking on the containers section is a huge list of pre-built and tested Docker containers that are necessary for a wide range of research and data science purposes. Among them, you'll find the PyTorch container that we'll be using in today's uh, uh, webinar. As you can see, the, the container is distributed via NVIDIA hosted Docker registry and is uh, distributed together with uh, fairly detailed instructions on how to take advantage of this container, including both pull and Docker run commands. We maintain all of the containers within the NGC on a monthly basis and uh, between the monthly releases, we typically update them, back fix them, patch them, and most importantly, extensively retest them. Those Docker containers are already distributed with a broad range of utilities. So apart from distributing the container which is PyTorch release, we add into the container a myriad of other technologies, including Jupyter Notebook, key utilities for deep learning network, deep learning profiling, and generic profiling of the GPU code, utilities for accelerating processing within the data loading pipelines, uh, end site utilities for even more comprehensive system profiling, utilities such as TensorBoard, uh, or Apex for mixed precision training and distributed training, or Nickel for um, distributed cumulative operations such as all reduced use during the training process. Please consider using NGC. We invest a lot of engineering effort into making sure that you can take the best advantage of the GPU. Irrespectively whether you're training with MXNet, PyTorch, TensorFlow, or any other deep learning framework, by taking advantage of NGC distributed versions of those utilities, you can make sure that you will get the maximum speed. What you're seeing in front of you right now is training speed of ResNet 50 on ImageNet dataset measured in images per second. As you can see, in August 2017, when training with MXNet, we could achieve uh, 5,000 images per second. And by December 2019, the speed on exactly the same hardware, exclusively due to software updates, increased to uh, almost 11,000 images per second. This improvement in performance is due solely to the engineering process involved in building those containers. And once again, I would strongly recommend that you use them on a day-to-day -day basis.
Okay, thank you, Adam. So in this case, as Adam mentioned, you see here that we're using an NVIDIA PyTorch compute environment, uh, which is a Docker image. If I open it, uh, you will see that it's based on, on the uh, NVC image with a little bit of customization to make Domino work on top and some extra libraries that I need for the demo. And if I go back to, uh, to the project, uh, so you see here that again, we're running Jupyter Lab, uh, but this is now based on this different NGC image. So it has all, all the prerequisite, it has PyTorch installed, everything is accelerated. Uh, so what we can do is I have here a shell script that actually downloads some data uh, and, and then runs the training model, the PyTorch training model. So this is uh, based on the uh, Stanford question and answers data set. Uh, you see here that we are downloading it dynamically. Uh, then we pull some uh, pre-trained weights from uh, from Google, uh, and then uh, we set up number of GPUs available, uh, some of the paths, and then we uh, we just run the training. So what I will do now is I will open a terminal. I will um, see. We execute this. Okay. And you see here that we are now um, downloading the data. And I will open a second terminal. Okay. Let me get ready. I need to set the path uh, where the data is being downloaded. And then we'll run the training script that, uh, that Adam spoke about. Okay, so uh, it looks like the data and the pre-trained uh, weights have been downloaded. Uh, so what we can do now is we can uh, start the training. And you see here uh, that we're using the, the, the training process uh, starts and is initialized. And it will take some, some time because it's a substantially large data set. Uh, we don't need to install anything additional. Uh, everything is based off the NGC container that Adam told you about. For completeness, let us show you the end-to-end -end training process, uh, but sped up considerably. It takes a, a good couple of minutes to train a model of this size. Okay, so moving on, next thing I would like to show you is how we can use on-demand Spark in Domino with accelerated GPU backend. So I have another project here that uses the Rapid Accelerator for Apache Spark. And Adam, would you like to, to tell us a bit more about the, the accelerator before we, uh, we show the demo? Until very recently, Spark, uh, GPU was a second-class citizen within the Spark ecosystem of utilities. Using uh, the GPU was difficult, and it typically required materialization of the data in order to take advantage of it. Its use was typically also limited to model training and inference. This is now changing with Spark 3.0. The introduction of the plugin uh, infrastructure allows us to transparently accelerate not only model training and inference parts of the pipeline, but also provide seamless acceleration for the entire ETL workload. And this is achieved through uh, two separate Spark plugins. The first one provides seamless GPU acceleration for Spark SQL and DataFrame API, parts of Spark library. The second one changes the way Spark Shuffle works in order to take advantage of some of the more advanced technologies present on the GPU, namely RDMA, Remote Direct Memory Access, and GPU-to-GPU -GPU direct communication. This tight integration of Spark and the GPU leads to fairly substantial acceleration of typical Spark code. What you're hearing, seeing here is a, a comparison of two DGX2 systems, so altogether 32 GPUs, with a 192 CPU core cluster. As you can see, depending on the query, and we're seeing here the queries from the TPC XBB benchmark, you can expect uh, typically approximately an order of magnitude of acceleration. 
And all of this is transparent to the user. The user doesn't have to make any uh, code changes. In fact, the only action required from the user is uh, to enable the uh, Spark uh, Rapids uh, plugins that provide the GPU acceleration. Behind the scenes, the plugin uh, intercepts the uh, Spark logical execution plan. It inspects the plan in trying to identify operations that already have GPU acceleration. And for those operations that are GPU accelerated, those steps are replaced with the GPU equivalent. Operations that do not have GPU acceleration quite yet remain uh, executed on the CPU. At this point of time, a fairly broad range of operations is already GPU accelerated. This list covers approximately 80% of the most frequently used operations, and it's growing. Uh, please reach out through uh, the Spark um, plugin GitHub repository for feature requests uh, and conversation about future direction of the plugin. The acceleration provided by the GPU plugin is so substantial that what we've noticed is that for a large proportion of queries, we become substantially bottlenecked by the communication. That is why we've also identified the need to change the way Spark Shuffle is being carried out. Rather than relying on the CPU to centralize all of the communication, and arbitrated between different workers, we have implemented our own implementation that allows the GPUs to talk to each other directly. This uh, uh, not only offloads the CPU substantially, but also allows us to take advantage of more advanced technologies such as NVLink and the GPU Direct RDMA in order to further accelerate that communication. We're also working uh, towards the GPU Direct Storage implementation, which will allow the, allow the GPUs to talk directly to local or remote disks, again, further offloading the CPU and allowing for much higher data transfer rates. The impact of the uh, Shuffle plugin uh, varies depending on the type of the query and the amount of data that it needs to exchange. I'll show you two examples. In this example, what we're seeing is 5x speedup as a result of introducing GPU acceleration itself and overall 27x speedup by introducing both the GPU acceleration as well as the Shuffle plugin. This example is much more compute intensive. It implements logistical regression training. The GPU plugin provides 9x acceleration. And the combination of the GPU as well as the Shuffle plugin provides overall 20x acceleration. So uh, what I will do now is I will start a new uh, workspace in this project, uh, which is a new IDE. It will be Jupyter Lab. And what you see here is that I also have an option in Domino to attach a Spark cluster. So this is not an existing Spark cluster. This is something that Domino spins up on demand. And we see a lot of value in it because quite often you don't need a Spark cluster up and running permanently, especially if, do, if you're doing some development and you want to test uh, your code with maybe a different number of executors, different versions of Spark and so on. Uh, so Domino allows you to spin up uh, a Spark cluster on demand, um, shut it down once you're ready. And it's the same uh, for, for running jobs. So if you have a job that does some data processing and requires Spark, uh, you can spin up a cluster on demand, do the data processing, tear it down uh, to conserve costs. So here you see that I can uh, set a number of uh, Spark executors. I can go up to 20. Uh, I won't be greedy. I can just say one here. And I can select the uh, executor hardware and the master hardware. In both cases, you see I'm using uh, GPU acceleration. I will say save. And then I will launch this. So Domino is now constructing and spinning up a Spark cluster for me. So this will, uh, this will take a few moments uh, because it needs to actually spin up separate Docker instances. It's a proper uh, distributed Spark cluster. So it's not like Spark standalone or anything like this. Uh, we can also integrate with existing Spark clusters. So if, if an organization already has an existing production Spark cluster, we can connect to it. We can do a push down execution. But the value prop of on-demand Spark is that it helps you to bring Spark clusters up and down very quickly on demand, whatever version you want. And in this case, you see uh, with um, accelerated backends that make the, the execution very, very, very quick. Okay, and what I have here is uh, a notebook that actually, um, you see, connects to my Spark cluster, uh, and then it runs a benchmark. So this uh, notebook comes again from NVIDIA. Adam, would you, would you like to talk uh, and tell us a little bit about this notebook and the problem that is being 
solved by this notebook? So yes, so the example that we are seeing comes from the uh, Spark Rapids Git repository. It describes a process, it implements a process of pre-processing Fannie Mae's uh, mortgage dataset. It carries out basic ETL that is aiming to pre-process the data in preparation for further downstream machine learning. And this process is non-trivial. Uh, the data set in itself it covers 17 years of mortgage data. So in uncompressed size, it's up to 195 gigabytes in size. Uh, so this code will read the files associated with the data set and run and the ETL timing it uh, during execution. The ETL involves basic operations, uh, which are preparing data into the format that is further required by the supervised machine learning algorithms such as XGB. Well, thank you, Adam. So uh, you see here, uh, because we now have access to a Spark cluster, uh, Domino also provides a tab with the Spark web UI, uh, so we can uh, see the state of the cluster. You see that currently there is nothing running on the cluster. Uh, there are no completed executions or anything. And what I can do here now is I can create a session uh, for this application here connecting to my Spark cluster. And then uh, once this completes, once my application gets initialized, if we go back to the Spark Web UI, uh, you see now that I have an application created and that it has uh, one GPU assigned per executor. And then we can go through uh, the notebook and execute all the code. And then the cluster will start will start running it and it will take some time because uh, this is again substantially large data set. You see here we're using partitions of 200 gigs, but then ultimately it will complete. And then uh, we can stop the workspace, save the model, stop the workspace. Um, and then Domino will automatically tear down, uh, tear down this cluster. So the final thing I would like to show you is how easy a Domino makes everything in terms of operationalization. So if I go back to my initial project, the one where we trained an XGBoost model, here you will see that the script that we use to uh, train the model, once the model is trained, also persists the model in where it go here, yeah, this is the trained model. Uh, we can lift this model in another script or a notebook and then just use it to, to score observations. And we, uh, we can create a separate script. What I have done here is I have created a simple Python script called score.py that reads this pre-trained model and then it has a simple function uh, that accepts the independent variables from the data set and then uses the pre-trained model to calculate uh, the, the predicted probability for the, for the target variable. This is a binary classification problem, so it's uh, zero or one. And what we can do is, of course, we can, we can run this script uh, as a batch job in Domino. We can schedule its execution so we can score observations in batches from relational database or a file store and so on. But what we can also do is we can uh, deploy this as an online model, expose it as a scoring endpoint via APIs, and Domino makes it very easy to do so. So if I go back to this project and I go to publish, go to the model API section, I can say, hey, Domino, let's create a new model. And Domino will ask me, well, uh, what is the name of your model? I can say my new airline model. And then you will see here that by default, Domino selects the default Docker image that has been used for the project. In this case, that's the rapid compute environment. So all the dependencies that this script needs, uh, like, for example, uh, things like uh, pandas, specific versions of CUDA, uh, QML, and so on and so on. All the dependencies that are needed for this code to run will be automatically picked up by Domino and they will be made available to the model that I'm deploying. So the development and the deployment environment are essentially kept completely identical. So once we move models into production, uh, we don't need to worry about different versions, about some library that was available during development that's not available for deployment and so on. So everything is 
is kept perfectly consistent. Uh, but actually, uh, we can uh, swap this image. So for example, uh, by default, we use the one uh, that the project was based on, but maybe I have a version of this image that is, let's say, a bit hardened for production, maybe uh, called rapids underscore deploy, where some users are locked or something like this. I can also select this image and Domino will use it instead. So when I say next, Domino will ask me, well, which, which Python or R file contains uh, the function that you want to expose. And the file is score.py. And if you see here, um, the name of the function is score. So I will say the name of the function is score. I will say create model. And what actually happens is Domino starts building a Docker image. And this image, again, is based on uh, the NVIDIA container that contains Rapids. And it also contains all dependencies that are needed for the code to run, which includes all the libraries that the code needs, but also dependencies like, for example, the pre-trained model because this is needed for doing the scoring. And this process will take several minutes to complete because we're building an image. And once the image is successfully built, Domino automatically starts two uh, instances. Uh, for high availability purposes, let me go back to my models uh, and load balances between the two. I don't want to wait for this model to be built. I already have one up and running. Uh, so if I go to it, you will see what a model that's currently up and running looks like. Uh, you see that Domino creates this unique scoring endpoint uh, that I can connect to. I can pass some JSON data, which is uh, in this case, the expected inputs for the scoring function, uh, the independent variables from this data set. So I can put some data here, uh, for example, whatever it is, and send it to the model and the model immediately responds with, with the probability. And we automatically generate the code to call this model from Python, from R, uh, Java, and so on and so on. The important part here is that once this Docker image has been built, this image doesn't actually have any dependencies on Domino. So this image is fully self-contained Docker image uh, that has all the, the Python frameworks, the trained model, and so on that's needed for doing the scoring. So Domino also has an API that allows you to grab this image, take it out of Domino, put it in a separate Docker registry. Maybe you have a separate Docker capable production environment, and then spin up a container of this image, and this container will start responding with predictions. So it's that simple to operate a model uh, using the Domino functionality. Okay, so, so finally, uh, let's revisit uh, the grid search that we kicked off. And uh, you remember that some of the stages were running on CPU. Uh, one of them was running uh, using the GPU acceleration. So if we go back to jobs, uh, you will see here that the GPU accelerated uh, job has already completed. Oops. It took like two minutes and 15 seconds and all the CPU-based workloads are still running um, over half an hour into it. So if we were to uh, schedule all, all of the stages on the GPUs, we would have done the grid search in like two minutes. And, and this is like significant, significant performance increase versus uh, waiting five or six hours of, of CPU compute time. Okay, so we are now open to uh, questions. We had quite a few of them in the chat. And yes, and I think a lot of them have been actually addressed um, as they came in live. There's a couple remaining. First being, do you have model manager functionality in Domino? That one probably should go to Nikolai. Uh, we definitely do have a model management functionality in Domino. When we deploy models in Domino, we can manage from an infrastructure standpoint uh, where we allocate resources and control the access to the models. And also uh, we register the operationalized models in assets dashboard so we can monitor usage. Uh, additionally, we have a separate product called Domino Model Monitor that allows you to uh, look after the models from a, a model degradation perspective, keep an eye on the models in terms of data drift, model performance and so on. So yes, in short, we do. Thank you, Nikolai. And another one for you. How, how can we do model risk management? That's a really broad topic. I think we have addressed this in, in various webinars and blog posts uh, at Domino, uh, but essentially different ways of managing risks are boiled down to independent validation of models and also having a model registry. Uh, and, and maintaining the history and the reproducibility of the models. We can actually cover uh, this quite well with the Domino platform because the reproducibility engine automatically makes sure that all the work 
is reproducible in Domino. Uh, we have Domino model monitor and also innately the platform provides functionality for different teams to have different access to models so they can independently validate the models and communicate findings to developers. So we, we strive to cover end-to-end -end model validation with, with the Domino platform by design. All right, thank you, Nicola. Yes, and we can we can follow up with some of the resources that we have on model risk management. I think we have a good webinar that we've run recently and also a white paper on the topic. I think that just about wraps it up. We've answered all the other ones that came in as they came in via the, the Q&A chat. Um, so thank you both Nikolai and Adam. Thank you everyone. Thank you.